she wasn't able to be with us uh to get together live but she's with us by video so i'll get that started in just a moment um and in the meantime i want to say that for the first time last year our film festival recognized our grand prize winner with a special in-person screening opportunity we brought the winner of our 2023 women voices now film festival uh the film with this breath i fly uh to a screening in this in los angeles uh, for community to join together, watch this film, and take part in a really incredible discussion. We're hopeful we can do something similar this year with our winning film and look forward to um, creating those opportunities with you to come. So without further ado, I'm going to pull up on the screen uh, Tali to present our Leslie J. Sachs Grand Prize Award for Best Feature Film. Hi, Women Voices Now. I'm so honored by this opportunity to present the final award of the 2024 Women Voices Now Film Festival. The Leslie J. Sachs Grand Prize goes to a documentary feature film of all round excellence, impressing audiences through effective storytelling, mastery of cinematic technique and competent handling of its subject matter. This year's grand prize winning film captures the essence of our festival theme, unintended consequences of our progress. As women, our opportunities to tell our own stories, to be mothers and to pursue our dreams are more abundant than ever. But in no way does this make our path easy or without setbacks or challenges. Colliding Forces, Mothers in Ballet is a film that takes the audience on an emotional journey of five women around the world whose passion for dance and roles as mothers collide. Inspirational, uplifting, totally original. This film puts grit and grace on full display alongside top level dance performance samples throughout history. Skillful camera work and lighting make this film a standout. So the Leslie J. Sachs Grand Prize Award for Best Feature Documentary and $3,500 goes to Colliding Forces Mothers in Ballet by Eliza Schroeder. Congratulations for your work on this incredible film. Congratulations to Eliza. Uh, I'll play a clip of the trailer now for us. No, yeah, darling, mom, we've got to dance a little bit first. Mom is going to come in and give you a big cuddle. It's like a double life sometimes. <laughs> Get on with you. Enjoy. Have a nice Enjoy the night, night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It's quite magical in this profession. It's almost like being a professional athlete. You have a short physical career and you have to choose that very early on. There's a lot of physical pain that goes into your training. The things we do to our body, those tight shoes that we put our feet into, definitely some days should be classified as torture. But we love it. It's definitely high pressure, but you're really living your dream. I loved performing. I performed in the top opera houses around the world. And last year I won the Critics Dance Circle Award for Best Female Classical Performance. I won the Prix de Lausanne to go to the Royal Ballet School when I was 17, and I worked with the Royal Ballet for 15 years in the end. And then I came back to Japan and I got offered artistic director job at New National Theatre. I never thought that I will dance outside my country. Then this miracle happens. Director from the United States came and gave me a contract. That appointment made her the first Hispanic principal ballerina dancer in the Houston Valley. It was my first time leaving my family, and I didn't speak any English. I knew this was something that was going to change my life. I'm so lucky I made it to the Royal Ballet. 
as much as people say, because you're talented, it is also so much about love. Being in the right place at the right time when I auditioned. Right after I had graduated at Columbia, I was training and one of my first clients was Natalie Portman. I helped train her and prepare her for the movie Black Swan. The goal was to have her look like a professional ballerina on stage. As dancers, we're so in tune with our body and, and you know, we know how to control like every... <laughs> I gave birth to my daughter and came back to work when she was six weeks old. I don't think that's physically possible. I don't think you could safely do it. I have to confess that I was not mentally ready. I was not physically ready, but I needed my salary. I needed to come back because I needed to get paid. It's a very, very competitive environment. There's always going to be other people. You really are quickly forgotten and quickly replaced, and it makes it that much harder to come back in. 